So this young patient, he was a young male presenting uh, with left cervical swelling. So you can make out from the study that this is, he, like, this looks like a very young patient. So he was just 20 and he had this, uh, clinically had a left neck swelling. So I'll go over the images. So this was the CT neck. If you saw this on your CT neck, what would you suggest next? Would you just uh, report it, uh, uh, the like report the mass, its extensions, or do you would you do something else along with this? So a large heterogeneous mass. The blast is predominantly like you see multiple hypoattenuating areas. So what? would you think of and uh, what would you suggest next? Yes, CT, excellent. Necrotic lymphadenitis, that's a great thought. So those would be our top differential, uh, whether this is a node, uh, a malignant node, or uh, whether this is uh, necrotic lymphadenopathy. Given the low attenuating areas, uh, this can definitely uh, be tuberculosis with multi-compartmental lymphadenopathy. Lymphoma is also a good thought, but uh, lymphoma nodes usually before treatment, they tend to be more homogenous and rounded. Uh, but this, uh, this node has uh, a lot of hypoattenuating area. So without treatment, lymphoma would not look uh, uh, like this. So chest CT, that's a good thought, but the the, the correct study in this case would be a chest and abdomen CT. Uh, so Gayatri has rightly pointed out uh, any particular, uh, so if you see a left supraclavicular lymph node in a patient, uh, do you know what uh, sign is that? And what is a left supraclavicular lymph node known as? And should you be worried about anything else? Or why is this left supraclavicular node so different than other nodes elsewhere? Perfect. So Stuti, Gayatri, Selda, Jia, and Shivali, Reem, all of you have rightly pointed out the uh, an enlarged left supraclavicular node is known, known like the sign is known as Trousseau's sign. And a left, the normal left supraclavicular lymph node is known as Furkow's lymph node. Furkow was the first person who discovered this lymph node. Uh, so a normal lymph node is the Furkow's lymph node, but when it's enlarged, it is known as Trousseau's sign, and Trousseau's sign uh, can be seen commonly due to um, gastric malignancy. That's the most common cause of an enlarged left supraclavic uh, left supraclavicular lymph node. Other malignancies can also cause this. So, when you see a left supraclavicular lymph node, uh, you need to think about more of a systemic cause. So. Gayatri, you were correct that we should recommend ACT, chest, abdomen, and pelvis. Before I show you uh, the abdomen pelvis study, in a young male patient, if you see nodes that are hypoattenuating, what should be your thoughts? Like where would, like if there was one area that you should, you can look at next, where would you look next? Excellent. So uh, Mitch has rightly pointed out testicular cancer, germ cell tumors or seminomatous tumors, uh, they tend to be hypo uh, attenuating. And so uh, these patients can have extensive lymphadenopathy. So this patient had, if you see, there was this large node, uh, large pleural based lesion here, extensive retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy. So there you go. And luckily for the patient, we covered the lower region of his testes. And uh, usually we don't do that, but uh, we covered this mass partially and this turned out to be a germ cell tumor. So uh, usually we don't cover the testes and it's not recommended to cover the testes on ultrasound because uh, the testes are superficial organs and they are better assessed by <clears throat> ultrasound. It was just, uh, uh, luckily we covered this uh, lesion on our uh, CT abdomen pelvis. And uh, so uh, this patient went ahead, uh, had an orchidectomy, and this turned out to be a germ cell tumor. So this was a case of Furkow's node in a testicular cancer. Remember, the first thing you think of with Furkow's lymph node is gastric cancer, but the other uh, malignancies can also be, uh, also cause this uh, 
uh, node to be enlarged, uh, which includes pancreatic malignancies, ovarian malignancies, testicular malignancies, lymphoma. And it's not just malignancies that give rise to uh, Trousseau's sign. Uh, even uh, tuberculosis and sarcoidosis can also give rise to left supraclavicular lymph node because there's nothing unique for it to favor malignancies. But in those conditions, usually the lymphadenopathy would be painful. Uh, you, when, whereas in cases of malignancy, the lymphadenopathy is painless. So that's how you can uh, think about that. And lymphoma would be more homogeneous. So, so hopefully clinical picture. Uh, uh, so that's how this, like not this patient, but patients present. So it is the Furkow's lymph node is the left supraclavicular lymph node, the normal one. When it's enlarged, it gives rise to crossia sign. What happens is that the thoracic duct uh, receives uh, lymph from the entire body, except this half of the body. So this half is done drained by the right thoracic duct and the rest of the body. So more than three fourth is drained by the left thoracic duct into at the junction of the IJV and subclavian vein. And that is the reason why you commonly see left supraclavicular lymphadenopathy rather than right. Like if you go back uh, and think about uh, your cases like the CT chest or necks that you report, left supraclavicular lymphadenopathy is way more common than right. So that's the reason why, because three fourths of the lymph uh, from the body is drained by the thoracic duct into this region. So the most common is stomach. So another like another uh, eponym which is associated with stomach cancer. So uh, what is an eponymous node associated with stomach or uh, ovarian malignancies? So eponyms are where uh, a particular sign in imaging or medicine in general, uh, we have like a scientist's name or a person's name associated. That's what an eponym is. So what eponym is associated, uh, eponymous node is associated with stomach cancers or ovarian cancers. So cavia, excellent. So system Mary Joseph's nodule. So a peri-umbilical nodule uh, in a case of stomach or ovarian cancer is known as system Mary Joseph's nodule. Interestingly, she was the assistant to the surgeon uh, uh, who was dealing with these cancer patients. And she was the one uh, uh, who discovered, who, uh, who thought of this finding. And the node is named after her rather than the surgeon. So that's uh, a nice... Uh, uh, little information about that. So testicular cancer, as we saw, ovarian cancer, pulmonary adenocarcinoma, prostate cancer, and human lymphoma can cause that. This is a nice video from uh, this uh, channel, Medicos, Medicosis Perfectionalist. He, uh, this guy uh, does excellent videos on medicine topics in general. So he's beautifully shown how the right half of the body drains uh, only one fourth of the lymph and three fourth of the, uh, three -fourth of the body lymph is drained via the thoracic duct. And that's the reason why you'll get left supraclavicular lymphadenopathy more commonly than the right. So you can go with this video.